In the summer of 1958, when political crises and revolt were shaking the Middle East, a Todd A.O. camera, always ready to carry you to scenes of action, joined the United States Sixth Fleet. The Republic of Lebanon had asked for American help, and every 90 minutes, Navy jets began a new patrol on the lookout for rebel infiltrators. Lebanon is a new nation, the city of Tyre was ancient in biblical times. capital of Lebanon, more than 10,000 United States Marines and Army troops were encamped for the duration of the emergency. This United States Navy task force in the Mediterranean drawn into close formation for Todd A.O. Powerful Navy and Marine Corps units capable of strong action, either to preserve the peace or to take instant retaliatory action in the event of war. Completely supported and replenished from the American continent, the fleets of the United States Navy can operate in international waters anywhere without dependence upon foreign bases. Coming in for a landing at high speed demands extreme accuracy. Having helped to resolve the crisis in Lebanon, at least temporarily, many of the fleet units will rejoin the naval forces of NATO. The men of America's new Navy are realists. Should they ever have to deliver their big atomic punch, they know full well it will be a war no nation can win, and few men survive. With Todd A.O., there's still a chance to join the last crowds at the first World Exposition of the Atomic Age, Expo 58, the Brussels Fair. Side by side are pavilions and exhibits of 50 nations and scores of industries, offering a capsule tour of the Earth and its peoples. You need no passport and there are no customs barriers. However, a guide will be helpful as you push push your way around this little world of international friendship and good fun.
Czechoslovakia was awarded a gold medal for the best national display. The center of attraction at the Russian pavilion, a full-scale model of Sputnik 3. The United States Pavilion, widely admired for its grace and beauty. Of the 43 million who came to the fair, no one had nearly enough time to see and enjoy everything. Tadeo enters Rome with sailors on shore leave from the United States Sixth Fleet. As always, eternal Rome stands high in the favor of all photographers. But in the fall of 1958, world attention is on the Vatican City, where a successor to the late Pius XII, Supreme Pontiff of the Roman Catholic Church, is to be chosen. Italy's Marcella has been elected Chamberlain of the 52 Cardinals arriving in Rome. Among these, the late well-loved Edward Cardinal Mooney of Detroit. Coming from all the continents of the globe, 51 princes of the Roman Church will meet in the most international of all conclaves of the Sacred College of Cardinals. These are the men who make the administrative decisions of the Church, who, four times daily, will ballot secretly until a two-thirds majority, plus one vote, elects a new pope. And destined for the throne of St. Peter, the 77-year-old Angelo Giuseppe Cardinal Roncalli, a humble farmer's son. As Dean of the Sacred College, Eugene Cardinal Tisra carries the burden of the papacy. It is Cardinal Tisra who has the sole right to crown the servant of the servants of God, the next Pope.
The Cardinals have entered into conclave, and the balloting begins. News of the voting is to be announced twice daily. Romans, pilgrims, and visitors come together in the square of St. Peter's. When a new pope is elected, white smoke will rise from the Sistine Chapel. Black smoke means no decision and more balloting. It is the evening of the third day. The farmer's son, Angelo Roncal, from the village of Soto il Monte near Bergamo, has become His Holiness Pope John XXIII. solemn ritual of the coronation mass in the Basilica of St. Peter. The Pope has many official titles and countless responsibilities. But for John XXIII, one task is primary, to be a good pastor for a world congregation. Many are impressed by Pope John's first message to the world, asking why the resources of human ingenuity are turned more and more to the preparation of arms, instead of improving the welfare of all mankind, particularly the poor. Thank 
gestures of Tadeo, all people everywhere can share the memorable events of our time. <laughs>